distinguished participants, good afternoon. It is a pleasure for me to join you today for this important Kigali Global Dialogue to devise solutions to critical sustainable development challenges facing the global community today. Over the last three decades, there has been increasing concern about the effects of economic activity on the environment. In particular, it has been argued that economic growth has caused serious environmental damage and that the current state of the environment will constrain future economic development. In general, Developing countries are often dependent on the natural environment for livelihoods and even continued existence. Thus, damage to the environment and the relationship between the environment and the economy are often though to be are often tough to be of more importance to developing world more than anyone else. Besides that, the emergency of COVID-19 pandemic has caused unprecedented health and economic impact globally and accentuated economic and societal challenges. <clears throat> These worldwide effect brought about by the pandemic will continue for many years and may impede the progress on realizing global agenda, especially 2030 sustainable development goal targets on ending poverty, ending hunger, climate action and environment. This reminds us that there is a current need to rethink environment to better serve development objectives. This requires to build upon what has worked and rigorously reject failed approaches. We actually can act to rethink environment to better serve development objectives. People are a critical factor in development. They may have fatal consequences on environment depending on their actions and the livelihoods. We all know that the development must be sustainable and environmentally sound. In sustainable development, the numbers of people must be in balance with the resources to sustain them, otherwise the whole system will collapse. So reduce, reuse, recycle. That principle must be our daily habit. Every product we purchase has an environmental footprint from the materials used to create it, to the pollution emitted during manufacturing, to the packaging that ends up in the landfills. One of the ways we can achieve sustainable development without harming the environment is to rethink our buying habit. Before buying, we must ask ourselves if we really need the product. If we do, let's look for minimal packaging and shipping. So this is another reason to buy what we need, not what we want. Taking an example on plastic littering, today's plastic pollution worldwide has reached 407 million tons per annum, slightly. About 40% dumped 
in the world's ocean surfaces. As a consequence, thousands of seabirds, sea turtles, and other marine mammals are killed after ingesting plastic. Thus, cutting down on plastic waste is a few sim simple steps. Use the usable bags when you shop. Ditch single-use water bottles, bags, and straws, and avoid products made from or packaged, packaged in the plastic whenever possible. That will allow us to free our world from plastic pollution. In addition, we can also rethink our purchasing mode. For example, if we plan to buy a new car, look for a fuel efficient mode or even go electric if possible. In this case, we will save thousands on gas money and reduce our carbon footprint over the years. Let's work, bike, couple, or use public transportation whenever possible. If you are buying a new refrigerator, a washer or dryer, also look for an environmental friendly one. The Africa Center of Excellence for Sustainable Cooling and Cold Chains based in Kigali is facilitating this transition. Last but not least, let's green our homes. Making sure that our home have, for example, adequate insulation and energy saving windows, energy saving light bulbs for more efficient lighting, water saving technologies, among others, can save our planet while contributing to achievement of sustainable development. On environmental initiatives and effort taking root in Rwanda that can serve and inspire elsewhere in the world. During the last two decades, Rwanda has put environment and climate change at the heart of all the country's policies, programs, and plans with aim to make Rwanda a developed climate resilient and low carbon economy by 2050. Rwanda put in place green policies and roles that support sustainable development and green growth. These include the environment and climate change policy, the green growth and climate resilience strategy, law on the environment, as well as the national cooling strategy put in place to phase out or reduce the use of powerful greenhouse gases used in the cooling systems known as HFSCs. As part of effort to achieve the goals of the Kigali Amendment to the Montreal Protocol. In May 2020, Rwanda was also the first African country to submit its revised Climate Action Plan, NDC, National Determined Contribution. In the plan, Rwanda has an ambitious target to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 38% by 2030 compared to business as usual which is equivalent to an estimated mitigation of up to 4.6 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. Likewise, Rwanda is also investing heavily in e-mobility, sustainable urbanization, climate smart agriculture, and renewable energy. 
In addition, Rwanda has embarked on massive tree planting and deforestation. <clears throat> and in early 2019, Rwanda reached its goal of increasing forest cover to 30% of all land area. The forest sector contributes to the reduction of land degradation, erosion control, and the reduction of intensity of landslides and floods in some areas. Increase in forest production, such as timber products, contributed also to the national import substitution because part of the forest products, timber products, that were previously duly imported are now locally produced. Similarly, efforts were put in protection and the restoration of degraded ecosystems, such as the wetland, lakes, and the natural forests. Forests such as Nyungwe, Gishkwati, and Mukura have been restored and upgraded international parks. On the other hand, Rwanda was one of the first countries on African continent to ban the use of plastic curry bags in, two, in 2008. This effort has earned the country a reputation as one of the cleanest countries in Africa. And I thank you to have used glass bottled water during your conference. It also created opportunities for entrepreneurs to invest in alternative packaging, materials, cloth, papers, banana leaves, and papyrus. In order to check and crack down and to check the increasing habit of unnecessary consumption and disposal of single-use plastic items, which becomes a burden to the environment, in 2018, the law extended the scope to the ban of both plastic carry bags and single-use items. Rwanda also joined with Peru to lead negotiations on a resolution to pave the way for an international legally binding agreement on marine litter and plastic pollution which was adopted in Nairobi during the UNEA 5.2. In order to support the best public and private projects that have the potential for transformative change in environment and climate change, and realize its commitment to building a green economy, Rwanda established the Green Fund with a mandate to mobilize financial resources. In the past 10 years since its initiation, the Rwanda Green Fund has significantly been contributing to the national resource mobilization effort as per the national climate ambitions. Since its creation, the fund has raised more than 217 million US dollars for green investment across the country. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, supporting human well-being while limiting negative impacts requires to rethink on our production and the consumption habits. First, First of all, the integration of sustainable development pillars, economic growth, social development, and protection of the environment, international planning and policy making must be a priority. Secondly, cross-sector collaboration and inclusiveness are of the primary necess necessity since the participation of civil society, local authorities, the private sector, and the general public 
men and women inclusive is critical to sustainable development. Thirdly, adequate attention should be paid to fighting environmental deterioration as the process could contribute to addressing climate change as well as challenges related to poverty reduction and economic growth. And finally, it is, must, it is a must to shift to cleaner technologies, energy efficiency and resource conservation. All of us together, we can achieve it. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much.